It is Monday night, which means it's another fun episode of Let's Talk Lorcana. I'm so excited to be solo hosting again this week um, for another women's roundtable. Um, we have amazing, amazing guests from around the Lorcana community. Um, and I appreciate everybody tuning in to watch this week. Um, as per usual, I'm always going to add this disclaimer at the beginning. I am flying solo this week. I feel like Liam is always like my pilot. And so um, please bear with me. Um, as I'm like pulling things up and bringing people in, um, cause I am not a pro at this just yet, but, um, so, uh, before further ado, I guess, um, I'm going to inter uh, introduce our guests for the week. Um, I'm super, super jazzed. We also have another guest joining us at seven 30. Um, so definitely stick around until the second half of the show. Um, so to get us started, um, I'd love to welcome a pillar of the Lorcana community, the host of the iRebel um, gaming podcast covering Lorcana and the upcoming Star Wars Unlimited TCG. Um, please welcome to the show, Jedi Geek Girl. Hey, how are you doing? I am doing wonderful. Thank you so much for having me on. Absolutely. And if I recall correctly, uh, your episode 140 drops today. Is that correct? Yes, it just dropped a half an hour ago. I was trying to get it finished and out the door before this uh, the stream went live. So. Oh my gosh. Well, hopefully after everybody um, checks out uh, Let's Talk Lorcana and This Week in Ink after us, um, people can head over and listen to your podcast tonight to wrap up uh, Monday Lorcana night. Well, it is a two-hour podcast, so it's probably best to listen to the latest, uh, latest episode of Ivy Bell Gaming on your drive tomorrow to and from work uh and it's very selective too so if you listen to youtube that is why the index is there you can just fast forward to the locana part or if you're into star wars and star wars unlimited you can listen to the whole podcast i mean just in general i recommend listening to the uh the whole podcast because locana is all over the podcast not just in the main thing uh, in the main segment Awesome. Well, great. We'll talk more about that, um, how everybody can follow Jedi Geek Girl um, at the end of the show today. But I appreciate you joining us again. Um, I want to bring in our next guest, um, a Instagram whiz, um, a collector of Lorcana, um, Natalie, who Natalia, who runs Natalia Lorcana covering all things Lorcana. Hey, Natalia. Hello, hello. Hola, hola. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I think it's both of y'all's first time on Let's Talk Lorcana. So we're so happy to have y'all as new guests. Um, I wanted to bring in our next two guests, our Let's Talk Lorcana veterans. Um, I have to say, back by popular demand, the only person besides Liam or myself who has ever hosted Let's Talk Lorcana on their own, inadvertently, Lorcana fan and hopefully future Lorcana artist, June O'Donnell. Hey, June. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi, it's so good to be back. <laughs> so for people who haven't checked out Let's Talk Lorcana um, for very long, June um, inadvertently hosted the show <laughs> one was, week. That was so um, crazy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I remember that. I think... Um, did last time june was on we had tons of technical difficulties. yes 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 and oh my goodness in the last women's live stream so everybody right, all right. of the other women got booted and june had to fly solo hosting the show by herself she it didn't was so job. stressful <laughs> i was so like oh my god because i've never like hosted something before like this and so i was like oh i'm gonna be so annoying <laughs> uh, it's so, it so great fun. And everybody took to Twitter and wanted June to return to the show. So she is, she is back. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, guys. Um, awesome. Our final guest of the evening is also a Instagram whiz. If you have not checked her out on Instagram, highly recommend. And game store LGS manager from Santa Fe, New Mexico, Sarah Geis. Hey, Sarah. Hi. Hello. I'm really happy to be back. It was really fun last time. So amazing. Thank yeah. you so much for joining <laughs> us. Sarah um, was actually supposed to join us, June, on that live stream that like crashed on us, but she uh, was in the midst of opening her new store. So it was 
Sarah, yeah. I love you. I love Lucky your background. That. That's so oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. It's all Pokemon plushies, so. My sister loves Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel like that's the catalyst to running a game store is having yes. a Pokemon yes. addiction, so. Right. Oh my goodness. I love Larkana because it's like Pokemon cards, but for Disney fans. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Like, it's so real. When she got into like, Pokemon cards for the first time, I remember thinking, I wish there was like a Disney version of this that I could play. And now there is. Dun, 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 dun. Um, so that's awesome. Dude, they were listening to you. They were. Yeah, you specifically. Yes, yeah, specifically me. I. Yeah. Really- I control the card game world. <laughs> oh my goodness. The mouse always knows. Exactly. Um, so I did want to take a minute because Sarah, I think you did just something so incredible in your community by this new um, LGS y'all have in Santa Fe. And so we wanted to, to start the show by chatting about um, kind of what you have going on in Santa Fe and your store and kind of the importance you have on inclusivity at in your spaces. Um, can you tell us a little bit about like your store and, and what y'all are doing there? Yeah, so there's a couple other game stores in Santa Fe for sure, but they're not really um, as card game focused as I am. Um, yeah, I see the comment about all the product. I am, <laughs> I'm really intensive about having a lot of product. Um, so we opened on, um, if you guys are familiar with Magic X1 pre-release weekend in November, um, just tried to get our foots in the door. Um, we have a big focus on like hanging out, everybody playing in the store. We like to make things like comfortable. We like to focus on like making sure that everything is like all ages, all inclusive, all levels. We do learn to plays every single week now. Um, we have a rotating schedule of like learn to play for this, learn to play for that. Um, we had a ladies specific learn to play night on Friday for Magic the Gathering, which was really fun. Um, it was just a lot of fun to like kind of bring up that community because they haven't really had anything like that before in Santa Fe there hasn't been a girl that runs a game store out there and I feel like every girl that I've talked to that runs one runs it a lot differently than all the boys do although I do love a lot of game stores run by men it's a lot different when it's all girls we get to have a lot more fun everything's purple in there um we're trying to do a lot more stuff this year in terms of like charity work like putting out play mats with the same guy who did the wall art people are commenting on um that way we can like take it fund it to different places like homeless like funding into like schools um we're also trying to like get out in touch with like schools in the area to start like Lorcana groups there in schools because I feel like it's an easy accessible game for kids just because of like the playability it's way more simplistic than magic is so it's a really good starting point and it's a really good like intro to gaming like it's just a perfect segue because everybody knows what disney is it's just like a really broad thing so this whole year is just going to be like really community focused and really kind of hitting it hard because they haven't really had a safe place where like we're official with pokemon we're official with lakana we're official with Yu-Gi-Oh. like that's all brand new so it's just been a lot of like intensive community work which is really fun because I love Albuquerque, that's where my old store was, but they've had, they have abundance of game stores. Everybody knows, like, that's easily accessible, so it's nice to go into a different space where that's not frequent, because it just, it's more opportunity to just have fun, bring a little bit of community back. Yeah. I have to ask, um, Sarah, is this you on the playmat? It is, yeah. So I hired um, Emmy, who's a really great artist. Um, so she did that playmat, and then she also did the new um, logo that we have on our Instagram and our Facebook that has both of us, like, with the logo for Valentine's Day. She's really talented. I can't do art to save my life. I can't draw at all. So I've been getting to have my boss pay her to do fun little projects, and now I like sign the play mats and people buy them, that kind of thing. It's it's really funny because I'm also on a shirt and like people will ask me, they'll be like, you look like the shirt that you're wearing. And I'm like, I am I the am shirt the that shirt I'm wearing. wearing. <laughs> yeah. 
I love that so much. No, I think it's so cool, Sarah, how much you like focus on like bringing people in the community into gaming. Um, and, and that's something that's so beautiful about Lorcana is it is like a really great entry point into that space. Um, but I just, I love how you focus on that so much in your stores. It's great. Like, um, Lurkana's been hard. Nobody's had Lurkana really out in Santa Fe. I'm like just getting people into collecting and I'm like trying to segue them. <laughs> like I love it. Yeah. very slowly, I'm like, hey, can I please push you into trying to play this? Thank you. Um, Andrew wants to know when you're going to be on the wall. <laughs> 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 That's a really, that's okay. my boyfriend to preface. Oh, so okay. he's just messing with, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 that's you. That's so cute. <laughs> I think questions I coming really in. Like, I love the way like the store like aesthetically looks. Like I feel like all the um, card stores I've been to are very like, and this could just be the ones in my area. But they're very, I don't know, like, aside from, like, a couple posters, it feels very, like, plain. I don't know, like, the, like, this is going to sound so, like, weird. Like, I'm talking about a Disney Park or something, but the theming mm -hmm. in, your, in your store is, like, really, like, the color theme and stuff really goes well together and really goes well with, like, like the overall aesthetic a lot of the card, card games have. And... I feel like that adds to the environment a lot. And also I feel like a lot of card stores themselves aren't very welcoming to women. I don't know if that's just like, again, the card stores in my area, but there's still like a, a lot of like sexism that we have to like, you know, deal with. And so I'm, I'm so glad that um, you guys like prioritize that. That's so, that's so nice. I love that. Thank you. Yeah. Most of our, the, the company that I work for is Duke City Games and all three of our managers are women. Oh, so that's awesome. like that's a really big really big focus because i mean i used to play competitive magic for a really long time and something that kind of pushed me out was like sexism not feeling welcome places like burnout because you just aren't having a pleasant experience every time you go sit down at a table like a pro tour so we're yeah. trying to change that it's a slow process problem is changing new mexico and then changing everywhere else right yeah, so yeah right. baby steps yeah. baby steps right exactly so, i will say like on this note um liam did an amazing job today of reaching out to the lorcana community on twitter and discord and sourcing some questions and i think um what we're talking about here is like a great there was a question that somebody so let me see um let me see what he pulled he put them all in here for me um Sorry, y'all. Again, I promise that. Okay, yeah. I loved this one from Steven. He asked such am such amazing questions. So um, how much does playing Lorcana with strangers affect your enjoyment of the game? Um, what constitutes a strange or becoming an acquaintance or um, a level that changes your enjoyment of playing with them? Does anybody have any thoughts? I'm extremely new to playing, yes. <laughs> the first time I played actually was the day that Rise of the Floor Floodboard was launched. And it was a, an event in San Francisco. I live in Alameda, by the way, California. Mm -hmm. And it was in San Francisco. And I went with a friend and my husband. And I was super nervous because I'm new to the game. So I said, what happens if the, everybody's mean? <laughs> mean to me because I don't know how to play and every I would say 99% of the people there were um, males yes so it was even more oh like what what are we doing here and you know what I don't know if it's the, if it is the Lorcana community but everybody was so nice I learned how to play just by putting myself out there they they we were playing we were learning so I would say just go for it. Go for it. Try it. Learn. Um, this is something that's still starting. So now is the time to put yourself out there. Yes, yes, yes. 
And I don't enjoy it when you play with someone that, of course, is like they want to win. They want mm -hmm. to win everything. No. But it, in my experience, it hasn't happened. So put yourself out there. Go to your local uh, game store and play. Yes. <laughs> I love that, Natalia. I so love that. Um, oh, no, we lost June. Um, hopefully she'll jump back in. Um, I, I totally agree with you. I think, um, you know, in my experience, you know, even at our LGS, a lot, the majority of the people in there are, you know, guys. Um, and the man most of the managers at the store are guys as well, but they're always so amazing and like welcoming. Oh, I'm gonna put you back in. Um, they're always so amazing and welcoming and really, you know, make like everybody feel welcome. And I think that that's what's, I think that that is LGSs in general and, but also Lorcana helps with that as well. Mm -hmm. So I think it's both, both incredible. Um, yeah. I mean, I'd say as somebody who like the, the amount of time that I get to play anything is very small now Yeah, because I sit there constantly just in the store, but Lorcana players tend to just be happier and more carefree people, which makes it a lot easier for them to make friends. Like I have never had to break up an argument between Lorcana players. Have I had to break up arguments between players of every other game? Absolutely. So I think yeah. it's it's mostly like a community thing. I mean, if you like Disney, you're generically a lot happier person because you just like fun, silly stuff. Nobody really takes it too seriously, especially because there's not like a pro tour or anything like that yet. So, yeah. So um, I also wanted to kind of we've had a lot of like fun to get into like actual Lorcana. We've had a lot of fun um, card reveals this week. Oh, and I just got news. So I'm super excited. I'm going to like pivot. I want to get into the card reveals this week, but I want to get this person's opinion on them. So our guest that was supposed to join us at 730 is joining us early. Um, so I am super jazzed and excited to welcome um, the artist behind the goat, Stephanie Shaw, to the stream. Hey, Stephanie. Hi. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us this week. Oh, thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. Awesome. And thanks for jumping in early. I appreciate it. I saw you sitting in the green room. Yeah, I'm just watching, you know. <laughs> Let's take Stephanie into this combo. <laughs> um, okay, so we've had a ton of cards get revealed this week. I know what I think is so great about this group of women is like we have players, we have collectors, we have artists now. Um, and so I'd love to get like just thoughts all around the board on, on some of the cards that came out. Um, so the first one super exciting for set three is a location neverland um it's a one cost one four card and it's you know kind of a vanilla card oh it gets you one lore um kind of a vanilla card but um anybody have any thoughts on this i do you know? i have so many thoughts <laughs> i love this card this card makes me so happy oh my goodness i love this one so much like the detail oh my gosh I'm losing my mind. Uh, when this card got announced, I was so happy. I was like, because I'm I'm a big Mary Blair fan, and I love Peter Pan. And this scene specifically has like lived in my brain since I saw it as a child. And the colors in it are on point. The like like the lighting is just so beautiful. And someone in the chat says it looks like where I'd want to go on vacation, and I agree with that. <laughs> It's just so, it captures like the feeling of the like, of the, that scene so well without feeling like it's a screenshot, if that makes any sense. And I love that about Lorcana and like the art in the cards is like, it never feels like it's a screenshot from the movie, but it feels like it's like the mo. it feels like how that scene does. I don't know if that makes any sense, but, but like, yeah, like the lighting is beautiful. The... The, the, the characters being in the center but framed so well so that you can focus on like the landscape and like the general idea of the character instead of like I don't know if that's making any sense but like the emphasis is on the scene 
but the focal point is the characters as though they're part of the background. Yeah. I don't know if that's making any sense. Like they're part of the scene as opposed to being the focus of the card. And I really like that. It's really cool. I love it. I love this card so much and I really want it. <laughs> this one. So just to contextualize Steph, since you just joined us, um, first of all, tons of uh goat fans in the chat um yes, so going many a little, going a little nuts for for your goat um so steph june is an aspiring artist um hopefully future lorcana artist one day maybe or animator um so that's like why she's got all these amazing amazing thoughts about the art so <laughs> oh i love that i love that this this card is really interesting it reminds me of a combination of right you have the original mary blair concept art for peter pan so you see a lot of that graphic style in there but also i see touches of inspiration from the backgrounds themselves from peter pan which I'm always studying because they're absolutely beautiful. And yeah, it's really interesting. Um, I think this artist did a really great job. Um, the color is great. And uh, one note too is one of the mermaids there, the one under the waterfall has red hair. And I know that in the Peter Pan ride, in Magic Kingdom at least, I'm not sure about Disneyland, but one of the mermaids in the scene has red hair uh, to spoof Ariel. So I wonder if that was carried through to this card. Oh, oh cool. yeah. Because I know in the Love movie, it. the waterfall mermaid <laughs> is blonde, I think. Yeah. If I remember correctly, it's blonde. So that's why, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's interesting. I love, that's such an, a fun feature of Lorcana is that they don't always just pull from the movie. Mm -hmm. They pull from like other things, you know. And I like that also in the card, the scene in the movie, the lighting is like very midday. So it's like blues and, you know, like um, greenish blues. Um, but in the card, it's like, it's got like golds in there as though it's like almost sunset or like the golden hour. And I love that. Like, cause it's like a scene that we know from a Disney movie at a different time of day. And like, that's just really cool. Yeah. I love that. Um, oh, cat making an appearance. <laughs> Cat. <laughs> oh, okay. Cat. Okay. So Steph, speaking of one of your cats, I can't remember if it's this one. It's this one. <laughs> Yay! Oh my gosh. Okay, tell everybody what his name is. Sergeant Tibbs. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Sergeant. <laughs> so I love it. So speaking of Sergeant Tibbs, Steph, I know one of your favorite um films, 101 Dalmatians. Deville Manor, um, which is also a one cost, one four, and you get one lore. Um, so I'm wondering if we're going to see kind of this combo in all ink colors. Um, like we have some of the characters that you'll see similar stats like repeated across all ink colors. But um, what do we like? What do we think about this and just generally kind of what what we think these lands are going to do for the game? So what jumped out to me immediately is it seems very similar to like battles in magic um which is a relatively new concept there are cards that are also faced that way there are locations that have like a status effect on the game and there's connecting cards that are directly affected by the fact that they're battles so i'm pretty positive like something's going to lean direction of like okay, these are all, like, location-based. You get this buff exclusively, like, if there's a location, it, which is kind of, like, also Hearthstone-based. Like, when you have the little sides that are reference, I feel like it's just going to be, like, a different play style thing, not really, like, a generic across-the-board thing. There's probably going to be, like, a subset within each color where, like, your status effect is active if this location is out on your battlefield type of thing. Yeah. Um, so something I've been wondering about, and Jedi Geek Girl, I'd love to get your thoughts on it, is, you know, the location cards are taking up card slots. I mean, we're not, like, having more cards in set three. These are taking up slots. So what do you think, or what do we all think um, that we're going to see less of? Do you have a thought on that, uh, Jenny Geek Girl? So, uh, 
my co-host and I frequently have this conversation in our Discord channel about locations, and he is a max expert, so when he examines these cards, he takes a very mathematical approach to these cards and how efficient they are playing the game. Uh, mm -hmm. One thing to remember about locations is that they are competing with characters because you are paying a cost to play a card to put on the board. And right now, characters are just more efficient and they help advance your gameplay. Uh, to me, they remind me a lot, and I'm gonna make a reference here that some people may not know, is they remind me a lot of support early in the days of Star Wars, Day uh, Star Wars Destiny. Uh, Star Wars Destiny was a character dueling game you have your characters and you're trying to reduce your opponent's character's health to zero and you have dice. So characters have a dice and support. You would play the card down and get a dice, but it took up more of your actions and it was more efficient to advance your game strategy through the character's dice. However, later as the game advanced, the support became more effective and they saw more play. I think that will be the case here with Lorcana, where the locations may not do much, but they will later, as soon as Design and Ravensburgers that get their hand on to when they when Ravensburgers get a better handle on designing locations and how they want locations to function in the game. I think one of the things that you need to make locations playable is synchronicity with other cards. Hence like John. Another thing I would like to see is some sort of action to get them on the board and or move characters trying to uh, not really not pay the cost to move, but move more efficiently, like pay one to move characters, or you pay for an item and you move for free. You know what I'm saying? So it's a lot of wait and see. Personally, I love the locations. I'm a huge fan of them. I'm a huge fan of a lot of the effects, but I think it we're just dipping our waters into locations and I just think it's a, you know, it, it has to manage, let it cook. Mm -hmm. Um, that's so, so much more eloquent than I could have ever talked about locations. <laughs> Thank you so much. Same, same. <laughs> oh my um, gosh. I feel like that, that was like a perfect explanation. Wow. <laughs> I know it's like a masterclass in, in locations. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you. You know, um, I was I thinking as I was listening this. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> Go ahead, Natalia. What were you going to say? As I was listening to this, I, from a, co a collector's perspective, um, I'm thinking what I'm going to do with the portfolio, for example. Because if I want to put it uh, in a horizontal with another that is vertical, what am I going to do? Who is creating the portfolios that we're going to need when into the England la uh, launches? <laughs> that is so true. Yes, Robin because Burger. I don't want them in vertical. I want to see the location. The portfolios that work for this. Yes, let's put it out there. <laughs> Sorry, Jedi Geek Girl, what were you going to say? Oh, I was going to say, you know, sometimes I try and with uh, wedding things and getting a point across. But uh, yeah, we have talked a lot about this and a lot of thoughts about this and I'm very excited for it. Uh, another thing is, is it creates a lot of opportunities for variants when they do more variants in the future. Like, could you imagine this as a full art card with no text? Just featuring the artwork. Yeah, um, that, would be, that would be so cool. Mm -hmm. Um, I know, I know that Magic the Gathering does them. They're textless full art cards, and they're really beautiful. Yes, I I agree. Something it's basically like an enchanted, but with locations. Oh yeah, thanks, Liam. <laughs> <laughs> Liam's Johnny on the spot on YouTube over there. Um, okay, so the next one um, is the Island of Fang, which is a four cost two six and when characters go to this location they're going to gain ward and evasive which i think is going to be super cool um does anybody have i have a question for steph on this card but like does anybody have any thoughts on this initially the best location so far in my opinion 
I yeah. am curious to see how this card is going to be played. Uh, I know that the uh, Emerald Ruby is like, yes, please. Let's, you know, give it to me. Uh, play it with Jim Hawking, you know, to Peter Pan. You can move. And like I said, this is a location that you want to be playing with an item or action or song card that tries to alleviate some of the pain in moving. So, like, I don't think paying two to move is worth it. I think you want to move through, like, Jim's effect or some other effect. You, you know it's going to be in the game. You know that it's going to be, like, a magic carpet, that when magic yeah. carpet moves, magic carpet can move a character, or the solar, uh, so solar surface where you just tap and move. So I, I'm sure this will see play with, um, with other cards that combo well with it. Oh my gosh, I love the idea of a magic carpet that will like move you. Like maybe it's an item card that you can exert to move to different locations or something. That would be well, so cool. Well, I mean, let's let, let's give magic carpet his due. You know, he, he would be a character, I would hope. Uh, you know, let's, I, let's, I, let's not reduce him down to an item. You know, I actually, so before Lorcana came out, Liam and I did a video, I think like back last fall, like fall of 2022 talking about if magic carpet was going to be an item or a character and at the time i thought it would be really cool if it if they made a card that could switch between a character and an item so like if he could be both depending on the circumstances yes that 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 would work but then you're getting into a, a different type of mechanics which hey i'm all here for um but you know you would have to have some kind of way to represent that That's like true. How do you put a token on it? Is it a dual-sided card and you flip it? Is it a going back to Magic the Gathering, a upside down card where you then you know there's a reason why that doesn't see play anymore. But you know, you have one side being one thing and you flip it around and then it's the other. It's like, you know, you have to visually represent that on the card. And you don't want it to make it too busy, otherwise the mechanic gets lost. Yeah. But um, so Steph. My question for you, since we've seen so far, like we saw Neverland, we saw um, Deville Manor, and now we're seeing Fang. Um, so we saw kind of like more classic animation represented in locations. And then this is a very like 3D animated film. But all of these fit so nicely in like Ravensburger's um, modern storybook like style. If you can, I don't know if this gets into the NDA world, but like, how difficult is it to like blend, to honor like the classic Mary Blair, but also make it modern? Like, as an artist, how are you thinking about blending those two things together? Um, it can be, it can be the opposite. It can be harder to stay truer a lot of mm. the time to the original because then you're, you have, or, um, you have parameters on it, so you're confined to a certain look. And I think that is actually harder than, because I think inherently you're going to modernize it just because of your own influences living now. You know what I mean? What I think is interesting with these cards is like um, the DeVille Manor, so much CG I'm seeing. And I'm, I'm surprised because um, when I did my card, you know, environments weren't in the picture. Mm -hmm. um, so this is really, it's really interesting. I didn't realize that they would be um, utilizing uh, CG and then also doing some paint over on the CG. So um, yeah, that's really interesting. And I feel like the, the Fang one has, it could go either way. It could have be painted over or could not. I'm not mm -hmm. sure this one. Um, but, um, yeah, I think it's interesting them incorporating CG because that's a lot of work to build in CG and then to paint over. Um, so I'm not sure how that's working, how, like, how, like what that entails in terms of making that card. That's, that's a lot of work. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The newest iteration of Flotsam and Jetsam which I think are way creepier than the ones that we saw in the first chapter. <laughs> these are, these are the guys of nightmares. I feel like. <laughs> um, so I think this, these are really cool because you're seeing the cards like Flotsam and Jetsam keep working together, but it's, 
it's not this specific like iteration so you see where it says the character named jetsam gets plus three on the flotsam card but it could be the jetsam from the first chapter um so we see these like continuing to to support one another except they're not getting support if that makes sense anybody have any thoughts jedi geek girl i'd love to know specifically like what you have to say about all of these working together things i am definitely a huge fan of them i know that i look at these cards from the thematic perspective i mean with these two cards as well as the previous two and ursula we're almost halfway to a strictly ursula deck mm. and i love the duality of them playing off each other and you can mi mix and match and hopefully we will see more of it in different colors so if you wanted to run a purple amethyst deck with ursula you can pick the ink pen to go with and then she always has her underlings her spies and then you can mix and match with the strategy that you want uh, obviously the effects of reliant of having one another on the field when it applies to the effects on one another um i haven't played with these cards i mean i haven't had a chance to really dive into like how they play in theory uh, but I am a huge fan of them, and I hope we see more cards like this. Uh, I can't speak too much about the competitive side. I just can, can speak to the casual thematic side of it, and I just love it. And I just hope eventually we get a all 60 card thematic Ursula and her two buddy deck. It might not be good. It might fall in the same category as a 101 Dalmatian deck that you know somebody's going to do just for the theme of it. Um, but yeah, I want to see it thematically. Um, I would like to comment, if that's okay, on yeah. Brian Kessinger, the artist. I'm like, I, when you pull up these cards, I'm like, how did they get this guy? This guy, okay, I'm an actual goat. This guy is a goat. So it's kind of remarkable. He even has a Wikipedia page I pulled up here. He's worked at like Disney for over 20 years. So this guy is a big deal. So it's pretty cool to that. That's amazing. That's so cool. It's amazing how they pull in, you know, like they pulled in Nicholas Cole for the first set. Like Robinsberger will like dip in and pull in these like super big name artists to do a couple cards. And it's so amazing to watch like that artist network grow. Um, I have to like, once again, leave it to my husband to like come up with ideas. So I'm gonna just pause for a second okay a mary blair gift set like the d100 gift set can i comment on this i have something yes. to say however i want to know like what cards would we want to see in a mary blair gift set i have so okay. many ideas I have a to bed, <laughs> this is all i want oh my goodness first of all someone in the in the chat um said uh like a beautiful background from like Alice in Wonderland, which is really pretty. But also the backgrounds in, in uh, Sleeping Beauty were done by Ivan Earl, and she designed, I think, she did some character concepts. So I would love to, you know, how we got the Rapunzel, and I think it was either the first set or Floodborne. And I'm so sorry because I get them mixed up really, really easily. Um, the, the two sets now that they're both out. Um, uh, but there's one where Rapunzel had a green dress in homage to Claire Keen's concept art. Mm -hmm. I would love to see like a Sleeping Beauty card that pays homage to uh, Mary Blair's concepts of her outfits and like the different because there were a lot of different concepts that would lend lean. Oh no! Century, um, around with like the decades and stuff. Um, so I would love to see more like concept art inspired, especially if they were gonna do a Mary Blair set. Um, like how we saw with those Rapunzel's with the green dress. Yeah. Does, do anybody, would anybody have like a dream Mary Blair card? Like if we did a Mary Blair gift set? And that's really cool. Um, yeah, so that's cool. Um, did I cut out there? I think I, you did a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Camille said in the chat that it's on Spider-Verse and 
just shout out to that because that would be cool. Um, uh, and so in a in a Mary Blair set, I feel like it would be cool to really pull from her concept arts and the color palettes that she uses in her co concept arts because they sometimes differ from the movie, and that would be cool to see. Yeah. Anybody, Sarah? Do you have any? If you could see a Mary Blair card. Oh lord. Dream card you'd want to see. I mean, I'm I'm an Aurora lover, of course. So I will take literally any that I can get. That's like the only enchanted yeah, that I own. Lover. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm like any any version of that that I could get my hands on, like if they were to do the same thing where like they are enchanted and they are full art and they have like that shock foiling, like I feel like that would be pristine. I'm more, I more care about like cohesiveness because they're kind of like, it's kind of like a secret layer for mm -hmm. magic. Like they're thematic, different, like the art style is to itself. Like that, I would just like, like what she said about like concept arts and things, like something just like thematically like unique mm -hmm. and not seen in like base set, it would be just something that I would be looking for. Yeah. Steph, if you were given an assignment to do a piece of art in Mary Blair style, like what would be your dream thing to create in like a Mary Blair style? Or have you done that before? Like with December? I I haven't, well, I've had her as like an influence, but I haven't really done that. Sorry, is, is it just me or the audio? Is that just me? I'm I, hearing some audio stuff. Oh yeah, there's some Oh pretty, no. Let I me know in the chat pretty. if we're having audio issues. I, I hear it too, Steph. I thought that was me. I thought that was just on my end and I was, my, my yeah, I head hear it too. Okay. I think it's my, I'm not sure. Maybe Liam will poke his head in here and tell me if I'm having audio issues on the feed. I think somebody's gain is high on their microphone and that is picking up the background noise. So you might want to try muting and maybe it will get rid of that background noise. If while we're if while we're answering this, yeah. people yes. move around and mute. Okay. Sorry, everybody, for the technical difficulties. Um, did that make it better? If we could just not have technical difficulties on the women's roundtable, that would be amazing. Um, oh my god. Okay. Yeah, I don't think um, it was. Uh, okay. I don't think so, it was you. Oh, I, I'll, I'll continue. Yeah. You no, know, go ahead. Yes, uh, please continue. I do love that Mary Blair idea. Now that I heard that Mary, uh, sorry, the Mary Blair, the Alice in Wonderland. Now I think that in my head. So I'm like, okay, I want to do that. That was great background, like some concept pieces. For Alice, up the couch. Well, I would do that. Awesome. Okay. Um, I'm gonna jump back into the card. Sorry, everybody. I'm like, I feel like that just like threw me off my game. Okay. <laughs> and yes, everybody, please ignore, please ignore my uh, tech support that just jumps into the studio. Um, please ignore the man behind the curtain. I love the the he's wizard never of our way. Literally said. behind the curtain um okay um so we have agrabah which is a three cost one five um for two lore it also is a vanilla card but a little bit more powerful than these um the one cost one that we're seeing it's also inkable um i love the style on this i think it's so um i think this is a little bit more stylized than some of the other like um, location cards if you kind of if you're able to like zoom in on the characters here they're not done in a traditional like disney storybook or the modern day storybook feel does anybody have any thoughts on this we're still having was, audio issues. Sorry. It was gone for a second, and then it went back and forth. Yeah, it was gone. Here, I'm going to go around. And while people are answering, I'm going to go ahead and, like, randomly 
hunt people back out into the green room and bring them back in. But um, okay, okay. Um, well, so it's gone. Yeah, that's weird. Maybe so, Natalia. I think it might be your mic that's that's causing the impact because I put I had you out in the green room and it it did it solved the problem. But um, well, Natalia, I'm gonna I'm gonna push you back out to the green room if you wanna maybe like um, unplug your mic and plug it back in. Let's see. Okay. Oh yeah, I think okay. that yeah the gain is turned up too high. Yeah, whoever said that in the chat is correct. I saw. Um, um this is my sister. It's her birthday today. Hi. Um, uh anyway okay, about so the thoughts yes, on the card yes i'm sorry um i love the like how the previous cards were all like cooler toned locations and i love that we're getting some more orangey like vibrant big loud feeling cards like this character lines look like the traditional storybook Stop that a lot of the other ones are going for. Um, um, oh no, and June's breaking up too. This is like the essence and the feel, the game's aesthetic. Hmm? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Hold on. Any oh, June, I was just saying you were breaking up again. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I have really bad Wi-Fi. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I'm going to go through some of these. I wanted to talk specifically about this item card because this is a super exciting card for those of you following Lorcana. Um, this is our first item that we've seen that's in, or the second item, I apologize, that we've seen that's like in the space of Lorcana. And this is the first time we've actually seen an Illumineer quoted in the flavor text. Um of a card so this is just came out this week super super exciting um and it allows whenever a character quests you may look at the top card of your deck and put it either at the top or the bottom of your deck so it's a little bit like an ursula's cauldron um and but a little bit different but yeah. Yeah, I'm very excited to see more and more cards that are specifically in the universe of Lorcana. I definitely appreciate the quote from a Lumetiers, from a Lumetier. Uh, I am curious to see what they are going to be in the game, if in the game. Uh, I would love to see them be a, how do I put this, more of a duelist in Yu-Gi-Oh than a planeswalker in Magic the Gathering. What I mean by that is like a character that you connect with outside of the game and they have their own theme and decks and stuff like that. And you can incorporate their personality into the game without including them in the game themselves as their own cards. Because, you know, we are the Illumiteers. We are, vi are visiting the uh, Great Illuminae and, you know, it would well, be nice to, you know, connect and talk to these other characters. It'd be nice just to focus on our own ink casting and summoning up our own things and stuff like that um when it comes to gameplay obviously this card works well with the sorcerer's hat mm -hmm. uh i'm curious to see how that combo will work they both cost two and they both are inkable obviously they work well with uh bell and maurice so it'll be interesting to see if we will see a strategy between amethyst and sapphire working together as a item deck or if the strategy might be too slow uh, I love the card of this effect. Um, just basically any filtering you can do to try to make sure that you can get to make your deck more consistent is great. So, yeah, I, I think this card will see a lot of combo play because even if you don't run it with Amethyst, you could run it in, like, Amber and have a bunch of small characters and do this multiple times per turn to, again, boost that consistency. And, again, if you can combo it with something that draws, like a BR guest, mm -hmm. to make sure that you can get a character for free that you want and be consistent on that, that's just gravy. Um, so, yeah, I'm curious to see how this card is going to be played. At the very least, this would be a fun card to play casually. Yeah, I love that. Um, I think this is going to be super, super handy to have. And I love um, just, yeah, I love the flavor that we're seeing and starting to come out in this set. Um, I, I do feel like we've kind of reached the climax of this like first story arc that 
Robinsberger was trying to tell. Um, okay, so I'm going to hop over. Um, we pulled up, as I mentioned earlier in the stream, um, we were able to pull in some questions from the interwebs today. And so I wanted to, to jump through those since we got about 10 minutes left. Um, let me, I know I'm, if, if we don't answer your question today, um, I will definitely respond to it on Twitter. Um, this was one I wanted to get everybody's kind of thoughts on, which is, um, and of course my little like cursor is covering up part of it, but it's basically, I think it is if, um, we could see a character who is not a princess turned into a floodborn princess in Lorcana, who would we want to see? And Steph, I know, I don't know if, if you are familiar with what a floodborn is or not. Okay. So just generally, just so you can start thinking about it, I'll have everybody else answer first, but, um, floodborn is not to get too technical with it, but it's like an alternative version of who the character is in the story. So you might see Cinderella as if she became a knight um, or something like that, but it's Cinderella at her core, but she's become a knight or um, I'm trying to think of other ones like Aurora, if she had powers um, and that sort of thing. So, but not a princess. So those are two bad examples. So I'm going to go around the table and Steph gets to go last so she can think of her answer. <laughs> Anybody thoughts? Sarah, do you, do you have any ideas? I think probably Tinkerbell. I just feel like that would be a lot of fun. I think it would be just really pretty if she yeah. was all in like greens and had like a big ball gown and maybe had like a tiara made out of like leaves or something. Like I just oh, feel if like she it would, like, would be made... really cute. Yeah. That would be that would be gorgeous. Just card art wise, I just think it'd be really fun. Yeah. I love that. Natalia, any thoughts? Um I would like Bianca from the Rescuers. But in I saw the movie in Espanol. It mm -hmm. was called Bernardo y Bianca. <laughs> so I'm assuming Bianca is the character also in yes. English. <laughs> awesome. And I wanted to say that it's not my microphone because I have been oh. testing it out. And and I'm not I'm not the guilty of, of the oh, noise. No. Yes. <laughs> we fixed the problem. It's no, not you. Great. Um, so what, um, Natalia, if Bianca was in a princess dress, what color would her princess dress be? Pink, of course. Okay. Pink. <laughs> um, Jedi Geek Girl, do you have a thought? I do actually. And I spent a lot of time thinking about this because that is what I do. Uh, preparing, full disclosure, preparing for the show, I took all the questions and I have all my answers for them over here on the right side of the screen. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, for me, I went it, I went with a out of the left field character and that would be Jane from Tarzan uh, being Princess of the Jungle. Basically, we already see her character and we see it. I haven't seen the sequel, but I am assuming that she becomes like a queen of a jungle and she gets the handle of it like Tarzan does. Again, I haven't seen, so I'm not sure. But could you imagine a floodborne version of Jane where she is the princess of the jungle and she has that confidence and swagger and that ability to work her way through the world that Tarzan has, uh, but her instead... Uh, you know, being the heir to the ape tribe. I love that. I so love that. Any other thoughts? June, Steph, thought ideas? Princess? Um, I would so. Um, but personally, like specifically, I would like to be... Um, like Nani from Lilo and Stitch, but she, like, she's so underrated. I feel like she needs more. Like, I don't. She's she's like a, my favorite non Disney princess. Princess, if that makes any sense. So working and like Lilo, did and Stitch, and I I just love her arc in her movie. And so I'd like to see like since in her movie she's always like working hard to support Lilo and keep their family together. 
I would like to see like maybe Nani getting to be the like surfer queen she wanted to be before her parents uh, got in the car accident. I'd like to see like in a world where she gets to like grow up normally at like in be like a teenager instead of have to step up and be Lilo's mom. I'd like to see like a, a happy Nani. I don't know. Um, like I'd like to see her, her living her life and because because she wanted to be a surfer, I think, before she had to take Lilo in. And I'd like to see that, you know, like what would surfer Nani look like? That'd be cute. That'd be awesome. I love this Yzma as a princess idea. Like, oh my I gosh. That. Oh my and, gosh, that's iconic. And thank you, Cody. I appreciate that. I love it. And um, I was thinking of a character who I don't even know if they have a card, but I would love to see Marie Marie from Aristocats. That was going to be my oh. answer. <laughs> that is honestly, but that's the yeah. right answer. That's why. That's why two people are thinking. She it. so deserves to be a princess. Mm -hmm. oh, oh my God. Totally. Wow, that'd be so cute. We oh, always yes. in our house uh, say like you're uh you're not a lady you're nothing but a sister <laughs> so oh my God, yes. agreed um <laughs> okay so um this year i feel like is full of lorcana events we have them coming out of our ears all over the country um even non Lorcana events stuff you could think of like Lightbox if you want from an artist perspective. But um, what would we like to see from content creators or Robinsberger to like bring people into these events throughout the year if they're not able to make it to all of them? I have an idea. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping to be at Lightbox this year and hopefully have a table. We'll see. Um, and I would like, um, I'd like everyone to step up the merch game. I'd like it to be more accessible online to see people's work, to maybe purchase their merchandise, um, at these events. I think that would be really cool because it would help connect people and artists to, like players and artists and uh, just get people more excited about the game. And also if it's Lightbox, get people just more excited about um, about their own work and about um, getting into the industry and growing themselves. Yeah, I love that. That would be so great if you could buy Lightbox merch online. That would be great. I would be in so much trouble because I don't know if we're gonna be able to make it to Lightbox this year, but that would be dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> um i think there really needs to be like a really solid like competitive play circuit because i think it's going to end up turning a lot of people away if they can't do like sanctioned competitive play eventually because i mean playing at your store playing at a 1k playing at a 5k only does so much um there's not really like a good like ranking metric to that and people are generically like myself really interested in competitive play um the reason why flesh and blood had so much success when that launched that game is four years old now is because they took like six months they put out their first set and then they were like okay next set comes out we're doing competitive play and now they have the biggest pro tour that comes around every year it's up to like over two million dollars in prizes like it brings people into playing the game and it makes people want to break the game. So you really need like, casual's great. I love casual. I want to support casual as much as possible, but like competitive players make the path for everybody to play casual and to have fun. Like they set themselves on a different level. They set visibility for the game. A lot of people that are kind of turned off from Lorcana right now would be taking Lorcana a lot more seriously if there was like a pro tour circuit where like you went and you qualified like at magic for a regionals and then you did the regionals and you did the nationals and there was cash prizes on the line people would pay so much money if there was ravensburger is gonna hear this because they keep tabs on me um 
<laughs> there would be so much money if they made like exclusive like competitive play promos that were like they could either they could make up something else like aside from enchanted like some other different level of rarity or like stamps or like signed by artist promos that you can only get with like this special art like it would go insane if they would just commit to it they just need to commit to it and have like separate cards for it separate promos cash involved like while also still supporting casual play of course because that's what supports game stores the most yeah game players on average spend a lot less because they just buy everything they need right away they're not looking to collect they're just looking to play whatever's going to win yeah but they just they need to focus on it a little bit i feel like it would just bring it to a whole nother level i agree i i am cautiously optimistic about this year and competitive play um i mean as a casual player myself i can't i'm not as well versed and eloquent on it but you know i'm hoping like i saw someone in the chat talk about like the roads road to worlds and you know with them talking about doing national and worlds at disneyland and disney world i think it'll be um i'm hopeful that we're gonna like have that pipeline but it is it's interesting it is like a chicken and an egg thing between like you have to support the casual players so that they then one day become the competitive players but you also need to cater to the competitive players that exist now um and so it's it's a it's a balancing act so um i have a couple of things i would like to say about this and yeah. uh when i look at this question i am approaching it from the content creator side more than the ravensburger side and to me well this includes ravensburger is they need to have media passes for content creation for content creators so people can go and report on these events and if they aren't playing can commit to doing content around these events the more exposure the event gets the more eyes that are on it it's a lot easier to follow with a stream or other content which i will get to here quickly um than it is just the event happening and then the results go up uh when it comes to content creators i would like to see uh between round interviews with players i would like to see deck profiles by people who drop out or missed cut you know, spend, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh does this, I'm sure other games does this, where they lay out their deck and you have the player talk through their decks and their choices and stuff like that. Uh, you could also do uh, reporting by players who didn't make cut, like how did your round go, what did you play against, what were your thoughts, your meta, and you put those out day of. So people who are like in between rounds watching the stream or whatever, they have content to go to. Um, uh, results being posted every round so people know how their favorite players are doing. It's like, hey, hey, Lee, I'm going to shout you out here for a second. But it's like, hey, I'm a huge fan of Lee. How is Lee doing? Instead mm -hmm. of having to rely on his feed and see what he's doing, there is this uh, end of round thing. So you can be like, OK, Lee is 4-2. Oh, hey, Lee, Lee is 7-1. You know what I'm saying? And then you, yeah. you know that. Um, and then obviously some sort of working with content creators from for some sort of commentary on stream. And I think you reach out to the content creators more than you would somebody from Ravensburger, no shade at Ravensburger, but usually your content creators usually are so involved in the game that they can probably do a better play by play uh, than the people that work for the company. Uh, no shade to FFG, but that was one of the things that was an issue with Star Wars Destiny is that the people that were doing commentators were people who were working at FFG and not the players themselves. So some of the things I would like to see when it comes to the competitive side, so. Same. Oh, that's again, so, so well put. Um, I think that that would be amazing. And, and something I know some content creators are, are working on, like trying to do more event coverage live and streaming and that sort of thing. Um, so before we go too far over time, um, I do want to get like final thoughts from everybody. I am going to shout out because I see them both in the chat. Um, make sure in about 25 minutes to go check out this week in ink. Um, Brandon or Jaunty, if you want to drop the link in the chat for people to head over to your stream after we wrap up here, I would love that. Um, they cover the latest uh, news in Lorcana each week. So definitely check them out. Um, Thank you so much to all five of you for spending your Monday night um, 
with me. I'm so, so grateful. Um, I'd love to go around and get final thoughts and let people know where they can follow you. So I'll start with Natalia. Do you want to, where can, where can folks find you? On my Instagram, Natalia Lorcana, <laughs> and also on TikTok. And yes, I encourage everybody to put your message out there, show your openings or your booster packs, your favorite cards. We need that everybody knows what Lorcana is because still a lot of people have no idea. So go and put your message out there and your, your spirit, your personality in the job you're doing. Yes. And thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Natalia. I hope you can come back soon. <laughs> Anytime. I had a great time. <laughs> um, Miss Sarah, where can everybody follow you? <laughs> so if you're looking for me, me, you can find it at Sarah Goose on Instagram. Uh, my TikTok is Peach TCG. Um, if you're looking for my store specifically, um, my at is at Twilight Hobbies on Instagram, and then the Facebook is just Twilight Hobbies and Games, um, and our website's twilighthobbies.com too. So if you wanted to look at all the stuff we have going on on a store level, you mostly find it on the Instagram and the Facebook, and then you can see all of our events and things on the website. But thank you so much for having me on again. It's always such a pleasure. It's so much fun. Thank you. Please come back anytime. It was great. Yeah, <laughs> I will. <laughs> Okay. And Jedi Geek Girl, where can folks find you and where they, can they listen to the most recent episode of your podcast? First off, I want to say thank you so much for having me on. It's been an honor and I had a lot of fun. If people would like to reach out and contact me, they can find me everywhere at Jedi Geek Girl. If they would like to find my brand slash podcast slash YouTube, you can find us everywhere at I Rebel Destiny. The YouTube is I Rebel Gaming. And yeah, feel free to hit, uh, hook up. Uh, feel free to hit me up and talk some Lacana, Star Wars Unlimited, and Star Wars in general. I'm always up to talking. And uh, yeah, again, thank you so much. I had thank a lot of fun. So I appreciate it. Come back soon. <laughs> Bye. Okay, June, where can folks check you out? Oh, June, are you there? Um, I'm uh yeah, sorry, I'm like cutting out a little bit. Oh. Um, but I think it's That's just okay. on me. Where can um, folks but, follow you? Um, I'm at June. Art. Um but yeah, it was so nice to, to be back on the women's panel. This this is like, this is the best, Lork Lorcan is the best community. This is such a, such a pleasure to come on here. Uh, thank you for having me very much. Thank you so much for coming back. And hopefully it was a little less stressful not having to host on your own this week. <laughs> yes, oh my goodness. Thank we'll you. See. Yeah. And Steph, where can folks find you? Uh, you can find me, Steph Shaw Art. Uh, that's my website, Instagram, YouTube. Check it out. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm really excited about just hearing everything that's going on with Lorcana. And uh, I'm going to put it out there in the universe. I really hope they do more like parks integration with Lorcana. I think that would be really cool. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You and me both. That would be amazing. <laughs> Um, thank you so much for joining us this week. We really appreciate you taking the time and hope you come back again. Definitely. Thanks so much. Yeah, for sure. Okay, everybody. Thanks, uh, everybody, for joining us in the chat. It was a great week. Again, please check out This Week in Ink in 20 minutes now. Um, and we'll see you all, all again next week for the next episode of Let's Talk Lorcana. Sign off. Catchphrase.